involved in uh, Cotter. Gunpoint, you know, gunpoint, yeah, you know, really, yeah, gunpoint. Like you know, they go held the Uzi up and said, "Be in the show, brother." Mm, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I auditioned. I happened to be. I was br I was brought out to um, Los Angeles to screen test for another movie I didn't get. It was a movie called Sparkle, and they got it down to be between myself and Philip Michael Thomas, and they brought us both. And that was the only time in my life I was ever brought back by the producers to be told, uh, <clears throat> "You're not going to get the part." You know, I said, well, well, "Thank you very much." I was real cool about that. You know, I remember Philip and I were sitting out there, and Philip was all nervous, but he, you know, he was he had pretty eyes. Who the hell knows? But anyway, I was brought out to screen test for that movie, and it didn't work out. And I was going on my way back to New York, and an audition came up. They said this show called Cotter. At the time, Kojak was on, so I thought it was a cop show. <laughs> I didn't know. And then um, they said, it's going to star Gabriel Kaplan. I'm like, well, who's that? You know, I didn't know him, you know, until I saw him. Then I said, oh, I've seen him on the talk shows and so forth. And I went and tried out. And as I said, at that time, uh, John and I had the same agent, so we got together ahead of time and um, started rehearsing at his little apartment with airplanes all over the walls and playbills. That's all he had in his little place. And, you know, I was eating soup or some nonsense. And um, they just kept pairing us together. You know, they kept, every time they brought us, we were always in the same group, you know, and they saw many, many actors, you know, my friend Ray Sharkey was down there and many other people, Ty Henderson, all these other actors, you know? yeah, man. So I tried out, yeah. How did you feel when you got the part? You know, it was, to me, I didn't um, have any, um, I didn't have a, a, a barometer to say, oh, I got a series, or it meant something. To me, it was another job. You know, I was just an actor that worked, and you know, if I did a movie, then I did that, and then I was out there looking for the next gig. So when um, I got the call from Alan Sachs, who was one of the co-creators, it was May 5th, I remember, 1975. I remember all of this important trivia, right? <laughs> you know, it was like we shot it on April 10th. You know, I mean, I moved here June 16th. What does it all mean? It means that you know somebody thinks I'm on drugs, but I'm not. You know, but um, it's like Rain Man. You remember? Uh, Rain Man. Man. <laughs> you know. But uh, Alice X called me, you know, in New York City and told me we had gotten the show. And you know, he was all hyped up and excited. And I was cool about that. But I, I, I didn't have any reality of what, a, what it would be to do a television series. I was a, guy, a New York actor and it was just another job. So I came out here and I tell you, when we did the show the first time for the uh, network, we, um, you know, did it and we thought it was Blackboard Jungle. So we played it serious. So all this network came in and watched us and there was no reaction. So we thought we had gotten them. You know, and then the producers came back and they said, man, you guys are going to be out of here if you don't get funny, man. We just did that. We had no clue. And so we learned to be silly, you know, and then we got corrupted. And Because when we started doing the show, we, next door to us was Chico and the Man. So every day we saw Jack Albertson and Freddie Prinz and, you know, we got corrupted on Vaudeville, Scatman Crothers and all this stuff and the Three Stooges and the Marks where we just lost our minds. And that became the show. That became the fun of it. But it was exciting, of course, you know. Hilarious. I mean, yeah. you guys really did become the Marx Brothers. Too, we were the Marx Brothers, the Three Stooges, the Little Rascals, you know, the, um, you know, the inmates running the asylum type thing. <laughs> you know, we were out of our minds. You know, and the way we even played it, at least in the first year of Cotter, um, all four of us was almost as if we were one character. If you watch some of the early shows, like in the first season, it's almost like we would finish each other's thought pattern. And that became the hook of the show. But it was fun, you know, you got a bunch of young guys in their young 20s, you know, and um, like I said, the, in the uh, inmates running the asylum type thing, and it was, go for it. <laughs>